Hi everybody, welcome to Celebrities, Writers and More. Here today we're gonna talk about Melvin Burgess. Uh, he was born in, on April 25 in 1954 in Twickman, Middlesex, Middlesex. And he grew up in a field near Crowley in success. He was an extremely dreamer and shy child. He used to walk around muffering to himself and playing with imaginary friends. He did very badly in school. He was dreaming too much to concentrate on something. It was not until he was almost grown up uh, that he began to think that the world around him could be at least interesting as what was happening in his own head. He went to the modern high school and was not very happy at this new school. At the age of 12, they moved back uh, to reading in Berkshire. This new school was integral. Children of all abilities had to go there. He got much better there because one or two very good teachers helped him a lot, but still he was the student who was uh, doing badly. Life got rapidly better for him after he left school, but for the first few months he hadn't got a clue what to do. His dad eventually filled in an application form for a job as a journalist with the local newspaper. Somehow he got into the job and went off to do the course of six months training. The course was great. It was the only real time as a student that he had. But by the end of, of it, he had decided that he, he really wanted to write and that no other career would do. He parked in the job as soon as he got back home. Then he got with writing his first book, which of course no one wanted to publish. For the next 15 years, he wrote on and off, had casual jobs here and there, spent a lot of time out of working with no not much to do and he enjoyed himself enormously at the age of 21 he moved to bristol bristol was a great place to live with a big racial and cultural mix he learned a lot there and got his feeling for his life his book junk is based on bristol's in those years although it's not very biographical, you can pick up a, a lot of the atmosphere and meet a few of the people on his pages. In 1983, he moved to London. At the age of 35, he began to think it was time for him to really try hard to see if he could make writing work for him. He had written a great deal of and on for years, a lot of experimental, but he had never really put getting published, overwriting that he felt like writing. So he had a go. He did short stories, radio dramas, and children's fiction. He had some success in all three. His first published book was The Cry of a Wolf in 1990. He now, at the age of 65, lived in Headband Birch, West Yorkshire, with his partner, Anita. Now we're gonna talk with Martina that had a lot of information of Melvin's books. So let's call it. Martina, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Camila, I hear you. There's a wild wind in here. Well, moving on to uh, Melvin, he has wrote so many books in his entire life and I'm, I'm going to show you some of them. The first book that he published and wrote was the Cry of the Wolf in 1990. It's about a hunter determined to wipe out every wolf in England and almost succeed, but then he finds himself like the prey. Exposing the cruelty and arrogance of the hunter, it sounds quite painfully to read. And when the hunter becomes the hunted, there's a rough justice about it and young readers will immediately understand and appreciate. Well, moving on to Blood Tide in 1999 is about a setting a world half in the mist and in the myth of the past. Blood Tide is ruthless. It takes in every human emotion, every crime is possible to commit. 
It's set in a mad world of violence and poverty and gang and warlords when genetically manipulate half men from a living barrier between the haves and the half nots. Then here in South America, there's a movie that is very famous and Burgess um, published it like as a book that it's called Billy Elliot in 2001. It's about Billy's mother has died and both of his father and his older brother are immersed in one of the most important mind strikes of all times. Billy's father takes his son to the gym to learn boxing just as he did as a child, but the boy wants to be a dancer. Something not well seen in, the, in this town. Will Billy overcome prejudices and achieve his dream? A great novel that shows the overcoming of difficulties and the collapse of gender stereotypes. The struggle of a child to overcome social prejudices. Venice Lady, My Life as a Bitch in 2001 also. A homeless man turns her into a dog because he was mad about something he did. She did, sorry. It's unprosily funny and nutty. As Sandra's dog, the main character, Identity, becomes stronger and stronger. She lives her life vividly and in the moment. Everything is impulse, inspired by sights, smells, sounds, and yes, sexual urges. As lady, she acts without thinking and she finds joy in the moment. Of course, this is a mirror of the kind of authority floating off the wall. What Burgess can do is capture the experience of adolescence with absolute and unflinching honesty. Then is Sarah's face in 2006. It's about Jonathan Heat, that is the biggest rock star on the planet. As part of his show, he alters his face through surgical interventions with impressive results, wolf, demon, angel. But so many operations do not come without their price. And Jonathan needs a face Trump transplant. And he only wants Sarah's. In a world of fame, wealth, and corruption where youth and beauty are sacred, what price has the face of the beauty young woman? How much are you willing to pay to a rock star who has destroyed his own face for the face of Sarah? You will know if you read it. Well, moving on to the other books that he has, I'm going to tell you just the name of them because you need to read them. In 1992, uh, there's Burning Easy and An Angel for May. Then, The Baby and Fly Pie in 1993. In 1995, there's Love in April and The Earth Giant. Then is Tiger Tiger and Junk, that is the most famous one, in 1996. Then is Nicholas Dane in 2009. Kill All Enemies in 2011. The Heat in 2012. The Hunger in 2013. And the last one, The Lost Witch. In 2018. Moving on to the awards he won and he has been nominated, there are Carnegie Medal for The Cry of the Wolf in 1990, Carnegie Medal for Junk in 1997, Guardian's Children Fiction Prize for Junk also in 1997, and Lancashire Country Library Children's Book for Bloodside. So you guys are extremely lucky because here is Melvin Burgess. <laughs> well, Melvin, I have just these questions for you. Why did you wrote junk? Where did you take that inspiration to write that book? And what was your biggest inspiration to write books? And why did you start it? writing those books. I'm going to leave you alone with Melvin. Well, first of all, I come from one of the generations when firstly recreational drugs were widely available. So, of course, all of us in school are very curious about it and also 
we didn't have any kind of information at the time. So this is kind of the book that I wish I had when I was 15 years old. And well, for junk, I drew mainly inspiration from actual people in, and incidents that happened in Bristol. Because I lived there during the period that I was writing the book. For example, the five main characters in this story were based on people that I knew and in fact they were a group of friends I met in there and they had very similar or or either identical experience that these characters live in this story. For example, Tar was a mixture of characters between Gemma's boy, real life boyfriend that sadly ended dying up on stress and my brother who has a an heroin problem and died not from heroin but from the Hodgkin disease just as he was getting clean well so you can see that Tar was a bit more of a concussion a bit more fictive and the real life Tar did not come from a violent background one of the people that also inspired me to write books was George, Or George Orwell who had this thing about writing that when you write politics you can make it very you can make it a very boring subject however Orwell wrote about it so, so simply that even a 12 year old kid would understand my inspiration to start writing mainly came from the English subject at school because uh, it was the only one I felt that I was good at it and I would always daydream in class I would make up stories in my head and I always enjoyed reading books so it was almost inevitable to it was almost inevitable at this point to not have thought that I would start writing books in my own Really wild, 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 really wild wine win out of in '99. Team mm -hmm. will really be plus huh? <laughs> many Sarah's fate and beauty are sac 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 we need to read them in 1990 in 1992 in 1992 and the last one the last witch in 2008 um, and the last one the last witch in two and the last one and the last one <laughs> and the last one the, the last witch in 2000 <laughs> hi everybody oh, yeah, I'll see. Mm -mm. hi everybody hi everybody welcome to celeb celebrity oh yeah mm -hmm. hi everybody espérate espérate saca tu mano ah no no era la mano qué era qué ah la silla corre la silla esta sí perfecto Hey. Uh, yeah. Now we're gonna talk with Martina that have a lot of information about Melody. So, <laughs> so now we're gonna talk about with Martina. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Now we're gonna talk with Martina that have a, a lot of, no, that have a lot of information. That a lot of, that has a lot of That has a lot, yeah. About his Melvin's books and more. Now we're gonna talk with Martina that had a lot of information about Melvin's book. books. Books. <laughs> now we're gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.